All right, just added to my flute collection today. This is a uh, one of the uh, manual arranging early ones. This is the uh, Fluke 8026B uh, True RMS Multimeter. Very cool. So this has some of the later features like a continuity tester and uh, True RMS reading. And I just checked that against, I uh, measured a square wave coming out of my old uh, Tektronix oscilloscope. Um, and it matches the uh, Fluke 87 uh, true RMS meter also, so that uh, part is working and DC is uh, reading perfectly accurate. The only thing that's not working right now is the uh, milliamp range. I think the... Uh, here's a good way to test these. Hook up the meter, take the positive and hook it up with uh, this on, um, trying to measure ohms, and that should measure the uh, resistance of the fuse, and it's calling it infinite, so that fuse is probably either missing or broken, so I'll take it apart. Now here's another issue too. This has a little bit more, so I can get the glare off this, of the uh, uh, LCD bleed going on than I expected. See it right there at the edge. Always seems to happen at the edge. And uh, but it's not interfering with this meter. Uh, you can see the the numbers all display properly. So it's just kind of a little bit of annoyance that happens uh, on these old ones. My other old one that I have here, this uh, 8022A. See, I don't know if you can, but it's got it right over here on the edge. It's kind of behind the bezel a little bit, so it's not as obvious. But it seems to happen on the uh, meters of this vintage. I'm not sure what causes it, and I'll have to do some research on that. But I think this one needs a bit of a cleanup. It's actually working pretty well, except for the uh, uh, current readings. And uh, so I'll clean it up, take it apart. Look on the inside, uh, let me see how the battery is, and um, see if we can get that fuse replaced. But another cool addition, and this was uh, $30 on eBay um, with free shipping, so not a bad deal for a nice old vintage uh, fluke that these things are actually very, very accurate and so useful even 40 years later. So let's open this one up. Okay, it looks like we got to this one just in time. I think that battery was just starting to leak down here in this corner. You can see there's a little deposit right there. So, uh, and it feels a little puffed up. Still working, of course, but... And there's some more residue over here, so... I need to go ahead and start cleaning that up. And I'll pull the meter out of the case and see if it uh, has any um, of the alkali on the circuit board. It doesn't look like it. And I did just measure the fuse here, and it is definitely blown, so that will need to be replaced. And there's the uh, screen bleeding again. Not too bad yet. So let's go ahead and pull this one out and uh, get it cleaned up. Okay, <clears throat> got this one all cleaned up. It looks like we managed to save it from uh, leaky alkali battery uh, stuff. I guess coming right out of there. Either this battery or the prior one, but there's quite a bit of uh, deposits in here, mostly in the inside of the case, top and bottom on here. So it was leaking around and running around down there but didn't seem to get on the, uh, the electronics of the meter much except possibly for right up here where this uh, um, one screw is uh, rusted and uh, corroded a little bit I might go ahead and pull off the display and see how that looks underneath there 
but uh, I think it's okay. And this actually has two fuses. There's one underneath here, and that one's okay. It's just this big one uh, on top. That was bad, so I'll have to look that up and see what that is. So, ooh, got to it just in time. I was about to uh, destroy this old classic meter. So luckily, uh, got that battery out of there, and I will put uh, one of the leak-proof um, Energizer Ultimate Lithiums back in here, so we won't have to worry about that issue anymore. So I think this chip underneath here has the date code on it, so I think I'll go ahead and pull off that display, clean up the uh, contacts underneath there, and check the date code. Okay, and there's the inner sill chip that does all the magic. If I'm reading that right, that's the 42nd week of 91. Hmm. Guess it could be that late. I'll have to look around on, uh, look for some more date codes on here and um, see if that matches up. But, uh, this board here, I guess this is the additional board that maybe that has the uh, true RMS circuitry on it because uh, that wasn't on this um, this meter. So I'll keep poking around, but it's looking good. So uh, I'm glad it's still working, and I'll go ahead and clean up underneath here because I think some of the battery alkali got right on that now you can see right there on that uh, that crystal oscillator it's got a little corrosion on it too so I'll clean up back here and put it back together I think even maybe on contacts here to the display so I'll get that fixed up well, I think I was reading that uh, code incorrectly I think the right under the ender sill label is the uh, chip part number and then right below it that s8814 i think that's the 14th week of 1988 that makes more sense i found a date code on the pcb itself uh, from 1982 i think it's right there see if i can see if this will focus on it It's right there, but let me see if I can get it. The camera is, is getting in the way, but uh, I think that's what that says. Anyway, so this one's probably from, I'd say the late 80s, maybe. So, well, let's keep getting her cleaned up, put it back together. Okay, and there's the little daughter board I just pulled off. It's got a little, uh, I don't know what that is, probably 7400, uh, 00, I forgot what that is, NAND gate, quad NAND gate. <clears throat> I don't remember my logic that well, and whatever that chip is, maybe that does some of the, uh, Conversions for the true RMS. There's another fluke chip right there. So maybe I'll shoot these uh, switches with a little deoxid just for good measure. And then go ahead and put it back together. All right, I've got. The, the old 8026B and I have not touched the calibration on it but here it is in comparison to my uh, Fluke 87.5 and it's dead on almost wait a minute well, yeah just about maybe one least significant digit off that's in uh, millivolts let's go up a little bit Go to volts. 
Okay, 0 0.732, 0 0.730. Get it up here a little bit. It's four and a half volts, 4.53 and 4.53. Let me change the range. See if that matches. That's the same. About eight volts, 8.3 on both. About 15, 14.86. In both of them 20 19.94 19.945 back and forth go all the way up to like 30 which ranges here 29.8 29.8 so uh, Let's measure some AC, some square waves and some sine waves and see how the uh, two RMS matches up. But on DC it's pretty much dead on without touching the calibration. And that seems to be pretty typical with these old flukes. You know, they just do not drift at all. Pretty amazing. Something ooh, nearly 40 years old, 35. Still working perfectly. Let's try measuring some AC. Okay, here we go. Measuring uh, AC. I'm uh, measuring about 100 hertz. About 6.2 volts, 6.21, 6.22 sine wave. Let me hit the range here. So this is measuring the same. So 6.24. This may be a little bit off. Maybe not, because it's reading the same as this one. Now, watch what happens when I switch to a uh, square wave on these. They all drop down just because of the source. But you see the two, two RMS meters are reading about the same, 2.81, 2.82. But the average responding meter, this old Fluke 25, is measuring 3.12 which is kind of how these things work. Uh, average responding will read higher than a true RMS meter uh, on a square wave. Or it'll read very, it'll vary quite a bit depending on uh, what type of wave you have. But on sine waves, switch back to that, it'll read uh, pretty much the same. Which is what this one and the 25 and the 8026B you're doing. If I may, this may be off a little bit on the uh, AC. We'll see. There's another thing that's pretty impressive about this old meter. I was just checking out the uh, beeper, and yeah, it works, latching, but very fast acting. That's right on par with the old uh, Fluke 87. And much better than this uh, much newer Fluke 27. It's very slow acting. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty impressive. I think I'll go ahead and wrap up the video here on this old Fluke 8026B from the late 80s. It is measuring very accurately and uh, cleaned up pretty well. I had to do a little, I had to glue this little tab on the uh, tilt bale. It had a little crack in it, so I put a little epoxy on that, let that cure overnight. Then I've got the fuses on order. It's a 3 amp fuse. So uh, that'll come in in a few days. So I'll leave the screws off the meter for now so I can uh, get to it because you need to take the back off to get to that, that fuse. But I am very impressed with this thing. Uh, the true RMS part is working very well. I mean, that continuity beeper is working great. Meter is very, very accurate. Uh, and I'm not even going to touch the calibration. It's it's all within spec. So there you go. For thirty dollars, 
it's free shipping. You can get uh, a meter that's you know as accurate as uh, anything you can buy today for you know for a lot more money. Uh, these things are much more accurate than some of the uh, cheaper Asian meters and uh, very cool retro look to them too. What's well, not to like? Except for maybe the screen bleed. Okay, I'll give you that. But uh, it hasn't affected it yet. Hopefully that'll last for a while. So that's it for the uh, review, cleanup, and uh, test of the Fluke 8026B True RMS Multimeter from the late 80s. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.